Elizabeth Chapel, a lifelong entrepreneur who finally found my niche. After years of new ideas and jumping from business to business, I figured out how to turn a craft into a successful career. In 2016, I started a monthly subscription box for quilters. That little startup has grown into a thriving, multiple six-figure business that I am so proud of. As a published author, designer of fabrics and patterns being sold throughout the world, my favorite thing to do is to teach others how to grow a career of their dreams. Each week, you'll hear from me or from other guests who are creative entrepreneurs, so you can learn exactly what to do and what not to do to grow a career that's more rewarding and successful than you ever thought possible. If you're ready to turn your craft into a career that you love, I am so excited you're here. Welcome to the Craft to Career podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Craft to Career podcast. I am Elizabeth Chapel of Quilters Candy and the host of the podcast. This week, we have Michelle Gifford. Okay, this is so exciting because Instagram literally called her. They reached out and wanted to schedule a call and she got to ask questions like, what? That doesn't happen. But it did. It happened with Michelle and she's going to share with us their conversation, the things she's learned. Not to mention her entire business is helping people grow their businesses. So I cannot wait for you to meet Michelle and to learn from her. Before we dive in and before you meet Michelle, if you could take just a moment to leave a review for the podcast, this will help the podcast to stick around, to have longevity. It will help the podcast to attract great guests like Michelle Gifford, who's here this week. And it will also help other entrepreneurs who are really wondering how to grow a business. This is an entirely free platform. I don't run ads. My only ask is that you leave a review to help the podcast and to help other listeners find this. So thank you so much for being a dedicated listener. I am so grateful that you are here. And now let's jump in and you can meet Michelle Gifford. Michelle, thank you so much for being here on the Craft to Career podcast. For our listeners, can you introduce yourself and who you are and what you do? Sure. My name is Michelle Gifford. I'm a brand and marketing strategist. I specialize in social media and beyond. Um, I run a marketing agency where we help um, influencers, creatives, big and small businesses really utilize all of the content opportunities out there. Um, I really focus on strategy and not just like creating a perfect feed, but creating content that will build your audience and make you more money. Um, I'm a mom to five. I live in Southern California and my business journey actually started on Etsy creating handmade little girl dresses. So I love sewing community. (laughs) I, okay. I didn't, well, I'm curious. So you were on my radar a couple of years ago, Kylie Farron's, she invited you to come and speak at a retreat. Is that right? Yep. I did it virtually. So I wasn't there unfortunately, but um, but yes, yep. We, I, I really do love crafters. Um, it's, I think my mom is a quilter. My grandma was, you know, see, they were all seamstresses. And, um, so I love it. My girl had, my 10 year old has a quilt that she's, that she's sewing right now. So we're teaching her from, you know, teaching her how to do block quilting. So I really love it. I think that it's a beautiful art farm. It's also a really great way to have a business. Very cool. And I will admit, just recently, the reason I was like, oh, we have to have you on the podcast. I saw that Instagram, you talked to the, like the owner of Instagram. <laughs> well, not the owner. <laughs> Tell me everything. I was like, what? So I did talk to Adam Misery. That would be something. Who but, is Adam? I, I just assumed he's the owner. <laughs> so Meta owns Instagram. So I guess Mark Zuckerberg is the whole, you know, the whole person. But Adam Misery is the head of Instagram. And so I did not talk to Adam, although that would have been something. But um, I actually got to talk with someone from Instagram. So they called and um, they, you know, how it actually happened is I got a little notification on Instagram and said, hey, do you want to set up a call? And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I set up a call and then they text me a few weeks later and they're like, hey, 
let's talk. So they, um, the first part of it, they went through and they, they like looked over my content and said, Hey, here's what, here's some things to think about. Um, and it didn't take long. So I, they, they were like, Hey, we have 10 more minutes. What do you want to ask? So I was like, I have a lot of questions. Let's go. <laughs> um, as I think there's, there's some things that are happening and it's on Instagram and you have all of these people saying all of these different things about like the tips and the hacks of Instagram. When I, my belief is that we really should just start understanding the strategy of Instagram, how Instagram works. And then we're not so like thrown off by all the hacks and all the things. Um, so I got to talk to him about hashtags, about posting times, um, about reels. They said, Hey, do you have any, um, feedback about reels? And I was like, yeah, we need a better reels editor. <laughs> um, yes. so, um, anyway, so that's, that's what we talked about for 10 minutes. Um, I can tell you what he told me. Do you want to know that? Or yep. what do you want? Nah, no, just kidding. Of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they, so that there's, everyone's worried about hashtags and the truth is, is like, they're not very, a big deal. You need to just, everyone needs to just take a step back. Um, and so Instagram came out about a year and a half ago and they said that you should only use five date hashtags. And then there was later, um, social media, they're, um, they're posting, what are they? Their company that you can like auto post through and like planally yep, or something. Uh, yep. So later di- they did a big, um, research, they research on the people that were posting from their platform. And they saw that people who are using way more hashtags were actually doing, getting more traffic to the So, so you have these two people, right? You have Instagram's like, do this. And then later's like, no, do this. And there's all those things that are out there now. People are saying, don't post hashtags all, you know, so you're going to get confused and up in arms. And I just want you to remember again, hashtags aren't that big of a deal. They used to be the way that you went viral. And now they are an SEO tool. They're a way to tell the search engine what your, which Instagram is a search engine. So they're just a way for Instagram to understand what your content's about. So what did Instagram tell me? They said, use five to eight niche hashtags. And, um, I said, what if I want to use more? Can I use more? And he just said, what's happening is people are using like spammy hashtags and that can alert the algorithm that it's spammy content. And so I I said, what if I'm strategic about what hashtags I use? And, um, he said, yes, if you're strategic, then yeah, why you can totally use more. And so what does strategic mean? I'll tell you what strategic means. Um, first of all, he said that the Instagram algorithm is good enough, which we should know this by now, but it's good enough to understand that um, you could use hashtag like quilting club and quilters club. Like if you just change it a little bit, you don't need to do those, both those hashtags unless there's like, unless that hashtag is connected to a community. But you don't need to just have like small variations of different hashtags because Instagram understands it. Um, and then I like to keep my hashtags under a million uses because that helps. Um, if there's over a million uses, it's a little bit more um, spammy. And there and there's so much competition that I'm probably not going to show up on the radar with those hashtags anyway. So um, just making sure that our hashtags are niche specific, content and content specific. And then, and then making sure they're not too big and that you're not using like just a bunch of different variations of the same ones. So I'll be honest, I've not used hashtags in years. So (laughs) shame on me. (laughs) So, I mean, is it going to make a difference? And should I go back and add hashtags to some of my older posts? No, I would not. I would not waste okay. the time of going back. Um, so there, there is a trend of people not using hashtags right now. And that's totally fine. Um, so Instagram is becoming more of a search engine, right? So because of that, it is looking for clues, information about our content. So it knows what our content's about. So it can push it in front of the right people. So one of the clues that they can't, that they're, as long as you put the hashtags in the comment, um, it is an extra clue. Do I think it's a huge clue? No, I think that they're looking at our actual posts and our captions. Um, but especially with quilters and like, if you know your niche, not just with quilters, but like there are probably some niche specific hashtags that you can mm-hmm. start putting in. 
And then when, because people do still search by those hashtags or they click a hashtag in someone's caption and then they bring up your content. So that's why that's I'm true. Sure, that's why I haven't eliminated hashtags because I think there's still, it's still a way that people are using. Um, they are still using them to find content. Um, so that's why I continue to use them. I don't think it's like, going to help me go viral or anything, but it does connect me to other content that I want to be connected to. Yeah, I'm thinking through this. So like, actually, I have used hashtags in the last little bit, but it's very specific. Like if I have a quilt pattern I'm making, I'll put a hashtag for the name so people can easily find. So okay, all right. Yay, I haven't totally failed in that regard. (laughs) Uh, So okay, I am super curious. Your Instagram following has totally just boomed lately I would love to know two things one how you've done it and I know like it's gonna be different for everyone but how you've done it and then two have you seen a correlation with sales because of that growth yes that, this is actually applicable to everyone I teach this so and I use it I have a marketing agency so we're doing the same strategy that I'm using for clients who are not Instagram specific right they're you know, they've got plants or productivity or other things. And so this isn't just a, it worked for Michelle because she's teaching Instagram. We're actually using this and teaching it and it's working for other people. So the big strategy shift, there's a couple things that you need to know. And I've said it already, but number one is Instagram is a search engine. And so just like if you were, I mean, if you've ever blogged or if you've ever used Pinterest, you know that you kind of have to train the search engine, Google, if you're a blogger, whatever. Um, what your content's about. So that's actually why niching down is so important because it allows Instagram, like the whole goal of Instagram is to keep people on the app, right? And so it wants to put the right content in front of the right people. So how does it do that? Well, first of all, it has to understand the consumer, what they are looking at. And it also has to understand the creator, what kind of content they create. So we want to be a reliable creator about our content. So that Instagram can rely on us to create great content and put, and so it can put it in front of the people that we want it to be in front of. So that's a huge thing to understand. And then the next is, um, and this is something that really changed the tide for me, is creating content for people who do not follow me. So a lot of us, if you're creating content and... It's, and you're not growing, but you're just, you're, you know, you have good engagement. You're probably creating a lot of nurture content. So we have to look at our, our Instagram following, um, like we are in different relations, like that we're in a relationship with our followers. So some followers have just found us. Some followers haven't found us yet. Um, some followers, um, have found us and we're nurturing them. And some of some other follower, followers have bought from us. So really understanding that we need to create content for every part of that customer journey. We need to create content for to attract new people. We need to create content to nurture people. And then we need to create content to sell people. And so I, when I did, when I started growing, I started looking and I said, you know what? I want to grow. That's my goal. So I'm going to increase my attraction content. I'm still going to nurture because I want people to stick around, but I want to create more attraction content. And so I focused on creating more reels and more reels that people um, that were on the edges of my niche. So not dead set in the middle of Instagram strategy, but on the edges of my niche that I knew people would share, save and comment on. And so I really started focusing on those edges and more attraction content. And that's when my content started, um, started exploding was because of that strategy shift. Hold on before. Okay. I need to dive into this more. So on the edges, like, I feel like I can almost grasp that concept, but tell me more. <laughs> okay, so I had a, um, I had a client who was a, um, she did sustainable fashion. Okay. So that was the very center of her niche were people who, who were really into sustainable fashion. So if she only, if she only created content around sustainable fashion, then what happened is she was there. She was only nurturing those current people who are already in her audience. But if we went to the edges of her niche and we're attracting new people. Now we, they definitely still need to be within our realm, right? Within our circle. 
Um, but we said, okay, what are something on the edges of your niche? Like, um, like maybe, uh, shopping your closet or building a capsule closet or wardrobe and those kind of things, which more people are on the lookout for. Right. And, and then once, and then you can, but it's still connected to your niche. Okay. And, but then it attracted people in because those two people who are building capsule closets, capsule wardrobes are probably also, they could care about sustainable fashion. They just, it's not on their radar right now. So if we can like use the edges of our niche like that to be like, okay, what could I create that would be able to attract people who, um, who will care about sustainable fashion, but what are they looking for right now? Well, they're looking about around capsule wardrobes. So I'm going to create content about that. So that's a good example of, I think of really looking on the edges of your niche to create content. I love this idea. My mind is already going a million miles an hour with ideas for this. That's, that's revolutionary. Okay. And then have you seen your sales go up since your audience has grown? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I know people, I know we say like your, your followers don't matter. And I like, you know, people are saying it doesn't matter how many followers you have or whatever, but I'm actually under the impression that I want more good people to have way larger following (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of of people who actually, they actually want to serve, not just fake followers or whatever, but real followers that they can help and they can serve. And so, um, there is some amount of legitimacy as you get more followers then it kind of snowballs right to where um, people trust you more and people are, um, they're like, Oh, your strategies do work because it's working for you and your clients and you're teaching it. And so, yes, I've definitely seen it on both sides. My sales go up as like on my, I'm a teaching side of my um, business. And then I have an agency side and both have been rising as, as I've gone up. And there is something to that. Cause I, I mean, I'm big on like, don't, don't stress on, on the following being the most crucial thing in your business, but there is some truth to like, I've looked at people, if they're teaching how to grow your business, but their business doesn't look very big. I'm like, uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't really want to learn from you. I don't. So there is some validity to it builds credibility. And even within the quilting industry, if you want to design fabric or work with different companies, they're interested in people who have selling power, you know, who have an audience. So while it shouldn't be the number one focus of like, it, it's not the end all be all, but there is some credibility and some doors that open when your audience is bigger. Yeah. And I really just, this is what I think about it. I mean, you don't have to have a million followers to make a million dollars. A hundred percent. No, I just believe that we're all spending too much time on Instagram and we're not spending enough time on Instagram strategy. So we, you know, we post all these things and they're all great. And like our friends like them and friends in our quilting community like them. But what if we just took a little bit more strategic time creating content that was positioned ourselves to grow and positioned us to be a bigger force in our industry? That's what I want. So can you talk to that? What, what would help? I mean, what are some things that you see? I have so many questions. I hope I don't forget any of them, (laughs) but like what, what does position somebody as like, Oh, I should listen to them. And what are some things you see people posting that you're like, Oh, bless your heart. That's really not doing what you think it's doing. You know, (laughs) (laughs) how long do you have? Just kidding. (laughs) Uh, I, a lot of times people really, um, I guess the mindset shift here needs to be your feed is for attracting new people. That's that's a rule I want you to think about. Your stories are where you sell your people. And of course, there's some selling that goes along on in your feed. But if you focus your feed on attracting new people in and then created a story strategy where you converted those people from followers to purchasers, then you that, that's really how you use Instagram the best. So like for your industry, there are probably people in your industry who have giant followings, right? So 
So I would go to their account, and I don't want you to copy, but success leaves clues, as Tony Robbins says. So figuring out, like, what are the things, the type of content they're creating that is getting, that is going viral, that's getting the most engagement, and really doing some research there, and then going to other industries and saying, okay, what is, you know, what is working for them that I can translate over into my niche? So instead of going into like very specifics about that, I actually am giving you an assignment. I want you to do some research and figure out like what is actually working. And I'd also look at my own account and say, um, am I creating these posts for me? Or am I creating these posts to attract a bigger audience? My The biggest mistake I see is people are posting on their feed, in their feed. So that's reels or carousel posts. Um, like they used to three years ago. It used to be about us a lot more. And now what it's about is the search engine and attracting new people. So that's where I that's where I focus. Um, it's not about you. So make your posts about your audience and how you can serve them. Um, go and do some research on what's working in your industry. And then look outside your industry and see what um, kind of content you can you can start creating. So I will, okay. I will admit I, right now I'm in a launch for my quilt pattern writing course, your account and Jenna Kutcher's. Those are my fallbacks when I'm like, what are some posts I could create that are going to go well? So I created a carousel and I've really tried to implement some of the things that you do with like, I've not done this a whole lot in the past, but just the carousel with words on it. Mm -hmm. And I tried to like, capture with the hook on the first one, give a little bit of information. And I I tried it. I, we're going to see how that plays out, but it's been a good launch so far. So, I mean, not that that's the only thing that's done it, but I do, I try to look especially outside of my industry because I feel like sometimes it can get a little saturated or like the quilting industry is a little smaller than maybe others, especially on Instagram. So I like to look outside of the industry, but I am curious, what are some things that you see? I mean, things that you would say avoid doing, I guess you touched on that a bit. Like, don't talk about yourself. What else do you see? So I definitely don't mean like, don't talk about yourself. You can talk about yourself. You can tell your story. That's why people are showing up, but you need to make sure that you have a, what's in it for them. What's in it for my audience. Um, and so, so with your reels, um, if you want, I'm dang it. You shouldn't have talked about your Instagram account. Now I was, I'm going to go look at it. Um, <laughs> my phone, but so one of the things that, um, to avoid doing is to, I think I'm going to do some things to do. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. If you really want to grow quickly, the easiest way to do that is through reels right now, because reels has a different algorithm than than any other platform, any other place on the platform. And the reels algorithm puts your content in front of people who do not follow you. Um, and then I would do short, I would do short videos, um, that are under seven seconds and not all of your videos need to do that. And then I would use some trending audio. Trending audio is a really easy way to jump on, um, to get on a wave of content that can get your content in front of more people. And for quilters specifically, I would focus on transformation. Um, so, you know, you're taking all of these random pieces of fabric and turning them into something. Um, what would your, what kind of transformation would your audience love? You know, so there's, I think there's a lot of ways you could do that. Um, I also think that you could, um, I think there's a lot of inside jokes that you could tell with <laughs> for quilters. And mm-hmm. um, you could be doing some, trending audios with that. And then I would also do some really, really quick wins. So what are some things if you're teaching quilting or you're trying to grow a a bigger quilting community, then like, what are some quick wins that um, you could give someone that in your audience, like that they're looking for right now that they could implement right now? Those are some things that I would think about because those are the things that are, um, that I'm seeing do in, in all industries do really well. What are some quick wins that you've seen in other industries that that's a good example of that? Well, I think like anytime someone does an iPhone, like I'm going to say an iPhone hack, right? Where they, 
talk about, you didn't know you could do this with your iPhone or, um, there's people who do it with like pho- photography or videography with your phone. Like you want better, um, picture, you want better video of your kid at the beach. And then they show the different ones. I mean, Tara Thusen, she did one of like digging a hole in the sand that looked like a heart and she put her phone in it. And then they, she took a family picture looking up. So she was all framed. And I think that has like, I don't know, millions and millions of views. And so those are things that are like really quick wins that people can implement. They could share right now. So in the quilting community, I think you could, I mean, tell me, is there a way, like, do you have a hack for unpicking uh, a scene? you know, that's not just a seam ripper or whatever. Like, is there a better hack that you could share that you like most people don't think about? And there's something I think too, tell me if you've seen this, but there's, it's almost like a dopamine hit when I see somebody almost like a transformation too. If they're like before and after and they clap their hands and their room is clean. It's very satisfying. I'm like, Ooh, let's do that again. You know, like those kinds of quick wins. Yep. Absolutely. And then I'm curious there is a a friend of mine who is on Instagram and I'll keep it as anonymous as possible. So she's not like, thanks for bringing this up. But, um, she's got a lot of followers and she just did a launch and it wasn't as big as she'd hoped. And there's a lot that can go into that. But my, one of my, the first questions I had was, is she possible, which in my mind intellectually, I'm like, no, that can't be, but I, okay. Your thoughts. Is it possible to give away too much for free? I can't believe I'm asking this because my answer is no. But is it possible to give away too much for free that people are like, she's giving away enough here. I'm not really incentivized to go and buy her thing. Um, yes. I mean, I I think there definitely is a way to give too much away for free, but I don't think most people are are even broaching that. So I, um, I think what the, there's, two things that I would look at. I don't know that I don't know the details of what's happening, but one of the things I make sure that my content is leading people to my email list. So if, if I only posted trending audio and that's it, I am not giving a person, I would get millions of followers. I could do that. I could totally just post trending audios, get tons of followers, but those audience, that audience is not ready to buy anything for me. Right. So that's actually why I do the track, nurture, sell con the content like that, because I want to have some attraction content that brings people in nurture content that sticks people, helps people stick around and gets people on my email list. And so then I'm building a really great funnel. And the other thing is, is you have to train people to buy from you. So if you just give everything away for free and all, and then once a year you launch something then maybe your people haven't had the opportunity to put like psychologically the first time someone pays you is the hardest. Right. And then it gets easier every time. So is there a way that you could, or she could start selling things, even if it wasn't necessarily her product, like start asking your audience to do something, whether that's listen to a podcast or download an audio book or, um, here's my affiliate link for, and this isn't stories, right. But my affiliate link for my favorite, um, nail polish, you know, whatever, but get your audience used to buying from you. Um, I also think I would also look at her launch phase and see if like what kind of content she was doing that led people to want to purchase from her. Um, because if you just bring stuff on people (laughs) and they're not ready and they don't know why they don't know, like you haven't brought out the pain points enough for people to care to buy, then I would emphasize that, you know, in the pre-launch phase, um, to help people get ready to purchase. Ooh, this is really good. I love this. Okay. So you want to prepare your audience to buy things from you, to click off of Instagram, to do things. So it's not this once a year when you do a launch, they're like, I'm sorry, what, this isn't what we do with you. You don't do this. And if you do decide to do it once a year, then you have to prepare them. That's like, this is the only time I do this, or I do this twice a year, you know, but you train your audience, how to interact and engage with you. People will ask me like, you know, I tell them my like story strategy and they're like, well, I know this person who does way longer stories than that. And I'm still watching. And I'm like, you know what? That person has invested the time to train you so that you understand what to expect from her. And so you, so she's winning and that's a great strategy for her. 
So you are in a relationship with your audience. I'll say that again. (laughs) And so you train them how to engage with you. And you have to be explicit a lot of times. Like you can't just assume that people know that you're launching. People don't know that you're launching, you know, like. (laughs) Yep, (laughs) I do know. (laughs) All over and over and over again. And I will say from the people that I've mentored or worked with, they're so afraid to tell that they're selling. Like, I don't want to offend people or they're getting sick of me. I'm like, trust me, they're not. And if you talk about something else besides what you're selling, it throws the audience off. They're like, wait, what? I thought she was selling this thing right now. Why is she talking about something else? Uh, Yes. Especially with women, we, I'm just going to tell you, you don't sell too much. I I really haven't really met anyone that's that, that on Instagram has an Instagram account you know, of course they're out there, I guess, but like most women, 98% are not selling enough. And we, but here's the deal. Are you a business or not? <laughs> if you're a business, then you sell stuff. And if you don't sell stuff, people don't buy stuff and you actually don't have a business. So the minute you decide to go on Instagram as a business account, you need to accept that you are a business and a business you're there to serve people. Taking people's money is actually wonderful if you're providing something, a great service, which you are, and it allows you to continue on with your business. Because I'm going to tell you, if you do it for free, guess what? You'll only last a couple years, but I want you to have a sustainable business. And I want you to like, why are people, why are you, let me ask you a question. Why do you think that they're afraid to sell? Um, I, I could be wrong, but I think there's this people pleasing aspect where they're kind of like, they want to be accepted by this audience. It's the same with like, if they see someone unsubscribe from their email, they're like, oh, I've offended them. They don't like me. They don't like what I have. And it's like, trust me, it's not about you. Like they're, they're not interested in this product at this time. They might be back. And if not, they weren't here for what you've got. But I think it becomes, I think I could be wrong, but I think it's the people pleasing, like not wanting people to not like us. Yeah, that's totally true because it's totally easy to have people like you if you're just giving everything away for free. Haven't we all been in that relationship like with a friend who just is like, yeah, can you watch my kids? And then you get like, okay, yeah. And then you watch their kids a ton and then they never watch your kids. <laughs> and then Yes, yeah, you, yes. <laughs> and that relationship doesn't last very long because it's not a real friendship. They're taking right. care of you. And we're in a relationship with our audience and it's a give and a take and you're showing up for them and you're showing up for them so that you can help them. So when people sign up for any of my products or my agency, it's actually the nice, like that's actually one of the best things I can do for people, right? Like when people pay me to, to do that, it allows me to do my best work for them. But if they don't, absolutely, me, then what, then I'm like, you know, when do I do it uh, in between soccer games and softball games and whatever. And, you know, I'm just, you know, here and there. But if you take this seriously and realize that what you have has so much value and you're actually helping and serving and making someone's life better, then it changes things, right? It changes how you show up. And yes, there's money involved, but we're not going to be weird about money. Money's awesome. This is such a huge thing for women in particular, which is very fascinating to me because I have yet to talk to a man or hear a man be weird about sales or how much they earn or talk negatively about another man who earns money. Like it just doesn't happen. But also I'm thinking like, if you were doing this for free and helping someone on your end, there would, I would think after a while, there'd be some sort of like negative feelings like, man, I'm doing all of this for free. And so for you to show up as your best self, where you're happy to help someone, there has to be a give and a take. The energy has to go both ways. And whether that's money or they do something for you, there's got to be that exchange of energy, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I actually, um, I did it wrong. I've done this wrong before. And I started a photography nonprofit and it lasted for four years. And the whole four years I fought to myself because I was like, I've got to figure out how to pay for this. But I was like, I can't charge for these things. Like I can't, you know, fundraise and all these things because I was super weird about money. And there came a point where I had four little kids, five, I had, how many did I have at that time? Five. And I, um, I was like, I physically can't do this if it's not giving me any return, like monetarily. And so I had to put it down 
And I, I, I mean, I think it was the right thing for that season, but if I would have been not so weird about money, I could have hired people, right? I could have had money, hired people to pick up where I couldn't take off and it could have lived on. But because I was so weird about it, because I thought, oh, what if I do make money from this? Then what will people think? You know, all of these things, they'll think I'm just greedy and I just want money. And I've done a lot of internal work to get over that because man, <laughs> too bad, right? Too bad that, that I don't have that. And so you have to do the work. It takes some mental work, but um, it's definitely worth it because money is so fun and it allows you to do so many big things. Yeah. Okay. I'm reading a book right now called The Mountain Is You by Brianna Wiest, I think, W-I-E-S-T. And she talks so much about mindset and specifically judgment, like that when we are judging other people, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Because if you've heard or thought like, oh my gosh, those people have so much money and they're so shallow, or money is bad, or success equals this, all of a sudden you are limiting yourself. But all of a sudden you're like, you will have a blockage for allowing money into your life because you associate it with these negative judgments. And so if we can take away our judgments of other people, we all of a sudden allow more into our own lives because we don't have this fear of others judging us or really of ourselves judging. And I think a lot of that success is being held back by our own judgments. Oh, a hundred percent. And you do have to figure out what is that thought that you're having about money? Like it's worth doing the work because once you say it out loud, like, like I was so afraid that if we had money that my kids were going to turn out and wouldn't know how to work or whatever. Cause I grew up on a ranch. Like I'm definitely, I'm a hard worker and it's one of my core values. Um, and, and when you say it out loud, you're like, well, I know plenty of people who are, have a lot of money who are hard workers, <laughs> but the, right. you know, that was one thing like you, until you like face it and you say it out loud or write it out or whatever. Uh, you are, you're believing it without realizing it. And you're, and that's holding you back because it's like, oh, well then I can't make, then subconsciously you're carrying that around that, oh, I can't make money because then my kids will be disasters or something like that. Right. We self-sabotage because of these sometimes hidden, we don't even know, but I did want to chat about going back a little bit. Um, I have to thank you for many chat. Is that what it is? Yes, many chat. Many chat. Yeah. I go back to your DM often. Cause I'm like, what is it again? Many chat. I have an account. So you introduced me to this. I'd seen it. I had seen it around like, again, Jenna Kutcher, all the people like comment this and I'll send you a link. I'm like, what, how's, how are they doing this? And so you had a link where you said comment and I'll send you this. I'm using it now. But I will say, even as we're talking, I'm like, oh, Elizabeth, you can up your game here. So right now I have my launch going on. And the link that I'm sharing is a link to my website. I need to be collecting those emails. So instead <laughs> of sending them to my website, get the email address and then email them the thing. Yeah. So it depends on what your goals are. So I'm, I'm in launch mode for just a couple more days. And I'm like, and so some of my content, um, so should we... First of all, should we say what ManyChat is? It's an autoresponder that you can, it's meta verified. So meta is okay with you using it. And you can set it up so that if someone at, set, like comments a specific word or phrase in your comments or in your DMs, that it sends them um, an automated response that you can come up, for, come up with. So if someone is, like if someone comments social on one of my posts, then it will send them a link to my Insta Social Society. If someone comments hook, then it sends them a link to my um, opt-in that has 137 hooks for them to use. So it's a way for you to collect emails. Um, and also you're, you'll see this like with people who do like deals of the day or something like that. And if you want the link, that's an affiliate link they're sending. And you comment like a word or whatever, and you get sent the affiliate link. So if you're launching, then you could send people directly to the sales page if, if you're, if, you know, if that's what you want. Um, if you're not launching, what I usually do for my nurture time is when I'm creating nurture content is uh, I send people to my opt-in and I, with many chat, um, it's pretty inexpensive and I'm gaining thousands of emails every month be with just my Instagram content. And so it's pretty remarkable. I love it. 
It is. And actually, now that I'm sitting here listening to you, I'm like, well, maybe it's not wrong. During a launch, I want to remove as many barriers as yeah. possible. So I think it's okay that I'm sending them right to the web page. But non-launch, I want to collect those email addresses. Yep. And then I also have to ask, so I also... <laughs> I feel like a little bit of a stalker right now. Like I find it here and here and here, but okay, whatever. It's a compliment. It's a compliment to you. So I also subscribe to your audio where you send an email with trending audio for Instagram. My question is, how are you figuring that out? When I go to post a reel and I go to audio, it just says recommended for you. And those are all things that have already gone viral and then it's like random crap if I don't you know how how are you finding trending audio so there's a couple of things I look for for trending audio so I will do like I will spend some time going through trending through audio I'll just go to my explore feed and I'm looking through the reels explore feed and I'll just be I'll scroll through and um I'm looking for a couple things one is um I'm looking for reels that have been used 5,000 or less like I just, I mean, you could do up to 10,000, but you want to use trending audio before it's completely trending. Okay. So you want to get on the bandwagon early. So that means there's, you know, you're, you are gambling a little bit, right? Like you might not hit it right, or it might not be the best, but, but this is your best bet to getting on a trending audio. So is to find it early. Um, and so then I will also look for the first this is my strategy. I'm giving it to you. Um, if the reel, the original reel that you can look at on the reel page of all the ones that have used it, if it's hitting about a million or more, then I know that it has a high chance of um, going viral. And then I will look for, um, I'll listen to the actual audio. And this maybe is the art part. The other part is the science, but this is more the art part where, where I'm looking to, to see, will is this an easy thing that people can um, easily duplicate over or not duplicate, but easily use over different, um, niches, or is there a beat drop or is there any nostalgia? You'll notice that a lot of the music that's trending has a little taste of the nineties <laughs> and it's, and it's made it for now. Um, so those are the kind, I mean, that's obviously the nuance part of it. Um, for me, the, you know, like just, just seeing the trends and the other part is the science part, but that's what I'm looking for. Um, I, yeah, I send out a couple trending audios a week and then I have in my monthly membership, my Instagram social society, uh, we give you a breakdown of a bunch of different ones and we break them down for like beat drop ones, um, ones that are just audio and ones that are like audio that you would put over, um, your, your reels, like background music. And then the other ones are, um, like lip sync ones. So we have that in in my membership. Well, as you're speaking on how you find it, the more I'm convinced, I would much rather just have you do it for me. So I will. <laughs> so that was my question too. Are you going to continue to share those free emails or is it all only going to be in the paid things? So but it sounds like you'll provide both. Yeah. I, I used to do like five trending audios per week, but I know I now I'm just doing two or three. And then if you are someone who wants a bunch of different options, then that's in the membership. And that the membership's great because like I'm sending two a week. And so you have to use the trending audio when you get them. But this will with the subscription you can do some preparation, right? Like if you're if you're planning ahead or creating ahead, then um, then you have access to all of those audios. And then I'm curious because in all honesty, what I would love in a perfect world is to just have you run my social media for me. So <laughs> is that something you do? Uh, or do you have a team that does that? It sounds like you have different products that you offer. Yeah. So the baseline is our subscription. And um, and I have a coupon code for that. If you guys want to try the first month for half off, you can use Quilting and it'll give you 50% off. Um, and then we have audits, which are Instagram audits. I have a team and you can, there's different levels of that audit, but we go, no matter which one you do, you get a 14 page document where we go through your account and we give you recommendations for what um, kind of content you create. We actually dive into like the, like, this is what I would create for the edges of your niche. Like you specifically, it's for you. Um, and so there's different levels of audits where you can just get the PDF. You can get the PDF in a 30 minute session with, 
um, one of my team members, or you can get the PDF and an hour session with me. Uh, so that's the audits. And then we have my marketing agency. I have a 20, I have a team of 20 plus women who are fantastic. Um, and we do, we definitely, um, we manage Instagram accounts for people. So we, we can create the content for you, create the strategy and the plan. Um, we also do blogging, email, Pinterest, um, podcasting, YouTube, um, TikTok. We do all of the things. Pinterest, I say that. Anyway, so we have a team of experts that um, we do the strategy and then we manage your content. And so that you don't have to, you can get back to doing all the things that you like and, but you can be on all the platforms that you want to be on. Oh my gosh. That just sounds like a dream. I just want someone (laughs) to take it over for me and do it all. (laughs) I know it's good. It's so fun. I love it so much because really the, the, the why behind all of this for me is I really want to amplify women's voices. And, and we just live in such a wonderful time where that can happen, um, where we have all of these options and it can feel overwhelming the number of options we have, but it also gives us so much opportunity to be able to reach so many people. And so I just, I love working with women business owners who, um, have a good message and we just like to give them the microphone and turn it up a lot louder. (laughs) That that is so cool. So for our listeners, where is the best place for them to find you? Well, you can hang out over on Instagram at I'm Michelle Gifford. Um, And if you're interested in my agency, it's M Gifford Creative. So if you can find me on Instagram, we would love to, we'd love to get you in the subscription where you get like uh, masterclasses about Instagram. You get my Instagram training and the audios and a content plan every month. Um, so that's a really great place to be. And yeah, but come on, hang out with me on Instagram. It's a good place. <laughs> it is fun. I will say I do love, plus you make it very approachable. There's one reel you've done recently where you're walking in front of your fireplace and you kind of walk up and look at this camera a little bit and you're like, here's ideas for B roll. Um, and I'm like, Oh, I can do that. Like that's easy enough, you know? <laughs> Yep. Um, and yeah, so you make it personal. If you have, I mean, if you're a podcast listener, I have a podcast. It's called The Social Strategist. You should come listen um, because that's, I dive even deeper into all the strategies. <laughs> awesome. And you just started that recently, right? So this podcast has been going on. I mean, I've had the podcast for years. I think we're on the 250th episode. But just uh, kidding. <laughs> but I did just relaunch it. So that's so yes, you're not wrong. I did just relaunch it with a new name. Um, so we just okay. added to the social strategist. So you are not wrong. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was. I thought I had seen that. So, and then just as we go, if you have one piece of advice for someone who is starting their creative, crafty career, what's one thing you'd want to leave to that person? The work is the way. (laughs) So there is so much that you could do. And I just said a lot of things about Instagram and you're probably have, you're probably thinking, Oh my gosh, I have so much to do. How am I supposed to craft? How am I going to create? How am I going to create reels? How am I going to do it? What are the edges of my niche? Anyway, you're getting overwhelmed. And I just want you to take a breath. I want you to think of like, what is one thing you can do right now that can move the needle across your, your goals? So for your goals, is it to create a real awesome? And are you like, Hey, I don't really know how to create a real, I mean, I can teach you, but the work is the way sometimes you just have to create content to get better at creating content. So don't be scared of that. It's going to feel awkward. You're not going to feel good at it the first time. And that's okay. That's, I mean, we've all been there. So, um, get to work. We need you so desperately. Uh, so get out there and post. We want to see you on Instagram. Very good. And I have to say one of the things that you touch on a lot on Instagram is the consistency. So it doesn't matter if you show up once a week or every day, but just stick with that. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the more you do it, the better it'll, the easier it gets, but just stick to a time that you can commit to keeping up with. Yep. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, Michelle. It was so fun chatting with you. Yep. I'm, I'm glad to be here and I'm excited to meet your audience. They're the best. Michelle, what an awesome time having you. I mean, listeners, if you learn something from Michelle, 
raised your hand. I can't see you, but I guarantee every one of you has raised your hand. I learned some things. I sat here and was like, oh, okay, let's try this. Ooh, all right, let's implement that. If nothing else, you heard about ManyChat that she introduced me to. You can go check out what that is and start implementing that. So Michelle, you're awesome. Thank you. Uh, just a wealth of knowledge and so generous to share that with us. So thank you. Thank you for being here on the Craft to Career podcast. Next week, we have another brand new guest, uh, an amazing and talented person who's a quilt pattern designer and one of my favorites. So I cannot wait for you to meet her. Until then, have a lovely week and I'll see you right back here next Friday. 